Today I'm going to talk about something that we've probably all seen before, but it popped up on YouTube and I watched a video by Patrick J. Kelly and uh, got me thinking about it. So this is a video about Jas Campbell's large flywheel and we've all seen this before and it looks too good to be true and you know maybe it is. But what interested me is that he made a, f a large flywheel that was horizontal and he had three motors and a piece of a tire on it so it would get pulsed three times per rotation. Now why he just didn't use one motor and three pieces of tire, I don't know. So I got to thinking about this. Um, let's read this. Uh, and it will only spun at 60 RPM. So we have to remember what inertia is. Inertia, the property of a body by virtue of which it, it, it opposes agency that attempts to put it in motion or if it is moving to change the magnitude or direction of its velocity. Blah, blah, blah. So here we have a little picture of something going around in a circle and you can see that the centripetal force has to be applied as a force, an acceleration, and it doesn't change the velocity, but the velocity has a resistance to changing its direction and that's a harnessable force, which I made a video earlier about that, how you can make a machine that how you can make a machine that uh, uh, works on uh, the velocity resisting change of direction. The centrifugal force. That's what the centrifugal force is. Is the inertia of the weight resisting change of direction. Centripetal slash centrifugal force demonstrates that to change an object's direction, an acceleration or a force must be applied to it. In the case of a wheel, the magnitude of the velocity is not changed, only the direction. This demonstrates that inertia has resistance to change in direction. So we can see our flywheel has a pulsed acceleration and the load is 180 degrees from the uh, direction of the weight, the inertia. So in a normal wheel the uh, centripetal is 90 degrees from the inertia so it doesn't change its direction. But in this case the flywheel, the load on the flywheel would have to change the magnitude and the direction of the inertia it's trying to slow it down. We can see that the load is 180 degrees from the wheel's tangential velocity. The load is not only trying to slow down the flywheel, it is trying to change its direction. The heavier the flywheel is, the more inertia it has. Therefore, it will have more inertial resistance to slowing down and produce more power. So, people make things like this tiny little flywheel. You should make a six foot wheel loaded up with weights. Car rotors are nice and heavy. Um, you see videos like this all over YouTube and they're obviously fake. Now the first clue is that there's dirt here. It's got wires buried in the dirt. And the second clue is that the motor used to drive it is huge. And the third clue is that the force isn't pulsed. So it's just the motor driving the generator, not the flywheel driving the generator. And the fourth clue is that the flywheel is too small. So it could work. I haven't built it yet. Um, very interesting concept that uh, inertia resists change in direction, not just magnitude. So that's a harnessable force.